years now. And this weekend, one of the first fighters to ever compete came to Bakersfield. Here with more now is 23 ABC Sports Director Stephen Hicks. Stephen? And, yeah, Jackie. Well, Donald Cowboy Cerrone was at this Friday's Condors game, but incredibly, another UFC great was also here. But instead of signing autographs, he was passing on his technique to the next generation. Inside the Camarillo Jiu Jitsu Academy, all eyes are fixed on something of a living legend. Many teach judo and Brazilian jiu jitsu, but few, if any, know the Russian sambo leg lock like Oleg Taktarov. Oleg came to the U.S. from Russia, wanting to be an actor. And to finance that dream, he started fighting in something new. It was the start of what we know UFC to be today, but with fewer rules, more fights, and at a time when fighters were using performance enhancing drugs. You think, like, maybe I should be stronger. <laughs> maybe I should get some steroids, but it's not that. It's those small elements which. They're more valuable. Behind those small elements, Oleg found success, winning UFC 6 and a record of 17 and 5. He's also become one of the most successful Russian actors, having appeared in more than 30 movies, even saying Robert De Niro attended his wedding. But this weekend's event was about his next chapter. I want to give knowledge which will be enough for you to build. Yourself. And that's where Dan Camarillo comes in. Dan, who has been around judo since he was just four years old, started following Oleg during his UFC days. He represented judo, and judo was my background at the time, so of course I started voting for him. Dan's aggressive style of judo in early competitions helped him to explode on the jiu jitsu scene. Yeah, we start meeting a lot of people who watch us on YouTube and stuff like that, and, and then we get to meet people like, like Sean Flannery, like Oleg Tatarov. After winning U.S. Opens in 1997, 98, and 99. Oh, oh nice. beautiful nice. flying triangle. Titles followed in 2013, 14, and 15. With a steady job at an oil field, he started his academy as more or less of a hobby to pass on what he's learned. There's a lot of instructors that don't really care about their students. And I think uh, what will make me a better instructor is to care about my students. But after he lost his oil job, the academy suddenly became his only source of income. But with now any financial pressure, Dan still isn't focused on the money. I don't know. I, I try to make this the best school it can be. Yeah. That's number one. You know, the money comes later. Hoping to pass on his love and knowledge of an ancient craft and build a network of future fighters here in Kern County. And a quick update. Dan says he's going to add more classes so he can continue teaching, but he's also going to continue competing. And as you saw at 2013, 14, 15, he's still winning these competitions. Okay. He really is. Yeah. He's making a difference here at home. That's Absolutely. Cool. All right, Stephen. Thanks. Well,